Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up. Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Welcome back, hour number two. Let's talk hook up on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here with Rock God Rick Maxa in the Mighty 1090 studios. Captain Tim Ekstrom, one of our favorite guests here from the Royal Star, talking fishing here. And oh boy, everybody is pumped up because we have local long range. I mean, you just heard from uh, Captain Mark Gillette down at Colonnette and so much going on. That's <laughs> so cool. Sea bass season right around the corner. So too. cool that just everything is happening. Well, I mean, you leave to go fish on a trip. And we didn't even talk about it. I mean, obviously, we're going to hear from Marcos later how good the local fishing yeah. has been, too. I mean, you you get on a boat. You untie something from the dock. Whatever it is, it's happening yeah. right now. Oh, you know, it's great yeah. Great half-day fishing, local fishing, long-range yeah. fishing. So, Oh, you you talk about fishing sea bass. Uh, I just put a little photo up there to just prime oh, you for sea bass dude. season this year. Uh, really great photo from Mark up at Capitola uh, in Northern California there uh, with a little score he had last fall. Uh, yeah, a couple you know, of sea bass. 59, no, 58, no, and a 35. No big deal. And then that wasn't his biggest of the year. I think he had one that was like 62 and a half. But anyway, great photo of the week. Yeah. Thanks for sending in. If you want to have your photo featured on our website, just go to the website and send it to us, and we'll put it up there. And then also I want to mention, too, the Angler's Table this week, a new recipe from Kingfisher Charters, the oh, Kingfisher cool. Salmon. And it's a great recipe. We've all had it at, at Kingfisher Charters, Best. and it's really fantastic. You want to take some uh, your salmon to the next level, check out that recipe on our Angler's Table section of our website, hookup1090.com. Speaking of fi- uh, Kingfisher Charters, sold out. Okay. Our trip for 2015 is sold out. That means all of our Alaska trips, as well as a lot of our other trips, are sold out. So if you want to go on a trip this year with us, check out our trips page, hookup1090.com, but don't wait too long. Because once Fred Hall show comes along, people really get on it and get booking. So uh, I would suggest getting on those trips, like the trip in the fall, the 21st annual Let's Talk Hookup trip to Palmas de Cortez with the $1,000 grand prize for the largest tuna, wahoo, or dorado. Thanks to George Ware Asphalt in Escondido, That's George right. Ware Asphalt put up $1,000 for the largest game fish in that tournament. And what's the entry fee for that tournament? It doesn't cost a thing yeah, for Let's how, Talk Hookup listeners. How cool is that? Yeah. That's if, awesome. if, if you're not a Let's Talk Hookup listener, it's $1,000. <laughs> but entry. if you're a Let's Talk right. Hookup listener, <laughs> it's free. And you must pre-register for that. So definitely uh, make your bookings because that trip is already filling up yeah. for October 8th uh, at Palma State Cortez. Well, as you can hear, we've just got an awesome show going on. Lots of great information. Lots of fun. We want you to be a part of it. Again, if you want to be a part of Let's Talk Hookup, we'll ask a question to Tim. Have your chance to win in that awesome prize at the end of the show today. And again, if you didn't catch the beginning of the show, how about this for a cool prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show? A brand new pair of Maui Gym sunglasses. It's the Island Time frame. It's a titanium frame, super, super lightweight, very comfortable. And they've got that neutral gray lens, the lens that made Maui Gym sunglasses famous for being on the water. So a really, really cool pair of one, uh, Maui Gyms for one lucky caller at the end of the show today. If you want to get your shot at that, you want to get your chance to talk to Captain Tim, 858 858- Four five seven ten ninety. That's our local number, or toll free at eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. That is your shot to get through. And hey, as promised, it's time to find out what's biting out there. It's time for the catch report today. Sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego, where you get the finest fish processing while you wait from your local, your long range, or your private boat trip. Check out the all new tuna burger from Fisherman's Processing. We've been talking about it all morning. You can have the freshest tuna available made right into these great tasting tuna burgers. It's already vacuum packed and ready to cook right out of the freezer. Check out the Facebook page at Fisherman'sProcessing.com for the best details, and you can see the photo of that burger that Drew made on the yeah. Royal Star, looking makes me just super primo. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool product. So, again, if you want more information, check out Fisherman'sProcessing.com or just jump on their Facebook page at Fisherman's Processing. Let's start it off with our private boater buddy, Captain Mark Wish of Pacific Edge. He's got that fishdope.com report. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Timmy. Well, good morning. Hey, we we got some good stuff going on, guys. So, here we are, the last day of January, which, you 
know, we kind of normally think of that as the dead of winter, but conditions this year are saying something very different, man. It's just crazy good. So let me run this last week down for you. So if you go to check the weather at NOAA.gov, you know, you get all the weather <clears throat> stuff right there. You click on observations just above the map. All the buoy come up all along the coast. And I look at that all the time. And for weeks now, literally months now, the water temps inshore and offshore have never been below 62 at all this winter. It's just crazy for this time of year. Then you look on the chlorophyll charts on fish dope, and it's clean. So you got 62 in blue. Man, that's just some good stuff for winter time. It's, uh, so in this nice water, we got another marlin report. Another guy's hooked one up there on the 150. That's the third one this winter uh, out there on the 150 fishing yellow. This was a great story. I don't have time to tell, but it was just like one of those stories that didn't end all that well, but it's pretty funny. And then uh, another marlin scene just inside Catalina. So it looks like marlin season's continuing. The tribute out there on the Cortez a couple of days ago just walloped the blue fins, 143, I think it was, for 17 guys. Crazy good fishing. At San Clemente Island, a little dab of squid in the cove there. A lot of seals on it, but there is a little tiny bit of a bait to be made there and some good yellow fishing with that. Uh, Catalina is loaded with yellows, mostly smaller fish on the front side. The better fish are around the back. Backside west is where it's been pretty good there. One of my buddies got a 27-pounder out of there the other day. That water at Catalina is 62 to 64 degrees, purple blue. And uh, warm water has got the lobsters crawling really good. It's been excellent lobster fishing here at the island. Quite a bit of bonita on the front side for that lobster bait. But, man, check. Keep an eye on your size limits. Fishing game is really checking for bonito size limits. One of my buddies has found that out the hard way. Uh, and along the coast, uh, Yellow's course is still the headline news. They're not biting every day. You know, as an example, Monday here local was really good. I was out Tuesday, managed to shut the bite off there. We had nothing. Wednesday was slow, and they were back up again uh, Thursday and yesterday. So, you know, it's kind of up and down like always there. But conditions local all up and down the coast are excellent. That water, like I said, 62 and blue, loaded with fin bait, red crabs everywhere, and big fat yellows, and Pete, the occasional sea bass is swimming around here. Uh, they're biting the yo-yo jig, surface iron, and mackerel on dropper loop setup. So, a lot of big fish, guys. Fish heavy line. It's time to go. It's crazy good fishing oh, this Mark, year. Does this feel at all like a January, basically February fish report? January 31st, Super Bowl you know, Sunday it, tomorrow. I, I was I, I walked our little dog yesterday morning. I was standing out there and feeling this balmy air, thinking this has to be May. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> way. This is gonna be January. I, indeed. Well, I'll tell you what. The guy that's been on it. Thanks to reports by you and other great people out there is Danny over at fishdope.com. And if you have you don't have fishdope.com and you want to go fishing, why not? Just get it. It's 169 bucks a year. If you're a new member, use the code HOOKUP1090, all lowercase, no space, HOOKUP1090. You get 20 bucks off, $149 for a full year of information. Whether you're going fishing or not, you just want to know what's going on. Fishdope.com is the place. And how do we find you, Mark? B, we're on the corner of Bolsa Cheek and Edinger in Huntington Beach. The phone number at the store is 714-840-4262. The website, PacificEdgeTackle.com. And, guys, go fishing, man. This is like a once-in-a-lifetime right here. Right. Thanks well, a lot, Mark. Appreciate that very much. And we'll talk to you next week. You got it, Pete. We'll see you. Awesome report. Well, hey, let's continue on with the great fishing. Head on down to San Diego over to Sea Forest Sport Fishing, where I know that great fishing has continued. Marcos, give us the rundown. How's things going at Sea Forest? Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Excellent. Great. Well, there's been a, I have to say, it actually probably got better since the last time I talked to you. Uh, early in the week, especially last Sunday, there's a little uh, 16 yelltail in the morning, 18 in the afternoon. Monday, 35 in the morning, 27 in the afternoon on those half days. Tuesday, 45 in the morning, 37 in the afternoon. Slowed down a bit Wednesday, Thursday, then again yesterday, 22 yells in the morning, 25 in the afternoon. And... Like yesterday, 10 guys in the morning, 22 yellow tail. 7 guys in the afternoon, 25 yellow tail. And some nice size of these fish, probably in that 15 to 30 pound range there. Um, great fishing. You know, a little overcast yesterday, a little bit of drizzle here and there, but didn't slow anything down. And like we were saying, it's February tomorrow, and we're still catching yellow tail. I'd say it's pretty much a continuation of last season still. So very good fishing on the half day there. And then the tribute, they returned from their day and a half yesterday. 17 anglers had 143 bluefin. One skipjack and seven bonito. Got three more boats out there today. They're actually scheduled to go out Monday, leave Monday, leave Thursday or Wednesday again next week. So lots of trips there. 
just like what we've been saying for a couple of weeks here, just like I said, almost better. So check the website, seaforthlanding.com. Check the schedule up there. Our half days, all our day and a half are up there. The the San Diego's still down for a bit. I'm sure they'll be right back down there catching fish when they're done with their boat work there, which they probably needed a break anyway from that great season they had. Yeah. You can, like I said, check the website, make reservations there. You can call the office, 619-224-3383. More than happy to get you out there fishing. There's plenty of fish to catch right now. I know, Marcus, we talk about it all the time, but it's kind of a double important thing right now on the reservations as far as this goes. One, because all of a sudden with this crazy fishing we've been having, the weekend trips have become so popular, a guy needs to put reservations in just to fill it. And now with the addition of all these trips going during the week, you know, the, the boat really needs to know how many people are coming early just so they can plan accordingly. So I just couldn't stress it enough. If a guy was thinking about getting in on this crazy wintertime good fishing, just call Marcos. Yeah, just call the boys. Say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going. I'm coming. The reservations become such an important thing right now this time of year. Yeah, it's tough when you start getting those calls where, oh, I'll wait and see. And, you know, if other people make reservations, everybody calls and does that. The boat doesn't get out and there's great fishing. Or like you said, they wait till the last second the boat fills up and, then you're stuck at the dock while they're out there catching bluefin. Definitely call and make those reservations. Get out there. Like I said, there's great fishing right now. Fantastic, Marcos. Appreciate that, and we'll talk to you next Saturday. We'll talk to you then, guys. Thanks, right. Marcos. Crazy good fishing. Well, that's going to really wrap good. up our catch report today, and just so cool to be experiencing that type of fishing here, like you say, the Locally. day before Super Bowl Sunday. Awesome. Yeah, how about that, huh? Let's go ahead and jump into those jam-packed phone lines. They want to talk to Captain Tim Extra. Well, jam-packed they are. How about we talk this time to Ed, who's calling us from Mira Mesa this morning. Ed, good morning, and thank you for joining us here on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, guys. I have a, a question, and I want to make a comment. Um what uh, I was wondering, uh, what I need for you guys to do is, maybe I'm kind of, well, I'm unclear on, on the limits of uh, bluefin tuna net between the states here and fishing in Mexico, because, uh, you know, it's, it seems that, oh, you know, that we're paying more money to go fishing in that, and then they keep putting the limits down on us. And, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I can only maybe go out on a day and a half a couple times a year, but... It just doesn't seem like you know I, I'm getting you know I'm getting less bang for my buck on that. Well, it, I guess it depends on if there's other species in the mix. You know, if you still we were talking about that earlier, if there's going to be albacore, there's yellowfin tuna, or yellowtail, dorado in the mix. You know, you're still going to be able to uh, accumulate if the fish are biting, accumulate a, a, a substantial amount of fish. Mexican limits being of the uh, just it, it's five fish per day. And you can have no more than 15 total in possession, three days limits, and then it, it's it's five and ten, right, for the uh, for the for the local. As far as the bluefin goes, for for one day. As far as the bluefin goes, it's two fish total per day, no more than six in possession. And, even and when does that go into effect? It was January 1st, as far as I no, know. No, doesn't go into effect. I believe until next month. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and, it, but, but in Mexico, it might be different. It's not. As far as I know, Mexico hasn't changed their limits. But in, in order to bring that fish into California, you still can't possess more than that right. that California limit. Oh, I see. So even if you catch more in Mexico, if you were down in Mexico, you could you could retain your Mexican limit 5 and 15. But if you're going to import it into California, it's 2 and 6. Okay. All right. As far as the value that, that you're receiving for your dollar goes, if you're out bluefin tuna fishing, you know, there, there's no way we can argue that point. I mean, I certainly wish that, that, that we had our... our, our you know, the old limits available to us, and, 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 you know, the battle was fought, and, you know, this all happened. I don't know if you've followed along at all there, Ed, but the, the battle was fought valiantly in, in, in all last summer, September, October. We went to bat, and we lost. Simple as that. It was, it was decided by the Pacific Fisheries Management Council to reduce the limit to two and six, and in an effort to, you know, do our part to pitch into conservation for bluefin, the population is overfished, and, uh, you know, everybody had to Everybody got a got got a chunk out of their limit, a significant either their quota or their limit, and, and that's what we came up with. So, you know, if you're catching quality bluefin, I, I feel that it's plenty, especially if you're long range fishing. You come back with six bluefin that are you know forty to sixty pounds or bigger. Hey, that's plenty. How of much fish. do you need? It's plenty of fish. Yeah. You know, it, it, if they're smaller size, plus you supplement that with some. Albacore, some yellowfin. That's exactly right. Some if, if, yellowtail. If there's other rotto. other fish, I don't think it's going to make any difference whatsoever. Yeah. You know, if you go out and it's strictly bluefin, you know, you're going to you you, you might. And if you can only keep six, then you know you catch a thirty pounder. You go, oh no, I'm going to take my chances, cut this one off, and catch a forty pounder. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's just a fact of fishing. You know, it's a fact and, of, of the world we live in nowadays. And, and here's a fact: 
All of these bluefin that we are catching are juvenile fish. They have not spawned, okay? So with that in mind, if this assessment that there's – I'm not saying I agree with the, the stock assessment that they're saying, but if we need to give it a few years to rebuild the stock by taking a lower limit and having better fishing for the future – I'm down with that. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't disagree. I mean, everybody yeah. knows it's a matter of image. You know, everybody across the board knows that the sport fishermen were not responsible for the for the you know overfishing and right. that, that that our impact on the fishery is negligible. But we got to do our part. We're we're a high profile fishery. And we have to show an example for the That's Japanese. Exactly right. And, we have and to set an example. Else, else Steward, stewardship for the environment. We have to. We we've got to be at the at the forefront of yeah. of, of ensuring that this fishery is going to be available to you know future generations. So we got to take a bite out of it. So be it. We're 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 doing the right thing yeah. in in being on board. Indeed. And we don't have a choice. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got no choice. Might as well, so might as well view the cup yeah. as half full, boys. <laughs> this is what it is. All right. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Well, now would be the time to go get your yeah, 10 fish limit on the tribute. Captain Mike is on the line. Good morning, Mike. What's up, Mike? Hey, hey good morning, gang. How's it going? Oh, Doing man. Great. What a trip. I know my friend Patrick G was on the trip with you on Wednesday, and he said it was just wide open bluefin tuna. And you know what? It, it sounded ridiculous, um, you know, because of uh, the bicep surgery I've had. I, I still I, I get to live vicariously through Jake, who's been doing a phenomenal job running the boat. But 143 bluefin for 17 people is phenomenal for any time of the year. Anyway. Yeah, right, yeah. Take, and, take the month that we're currently in out of it. That's a great score any time. Yeah, the Super Bowl is tomorrow, and there's a lot of people that got off the boat that are going to have fresh uh, Bluefin sashimi, grilled sashimi, or a grilled bluefin. Um, it's really unheard of. I, I got done processing some of it last night, and I, I, I think it tastes better in January. I'm almost positive. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, talking about the bluefin limit, as of right now, it is still 10 in U.S. waters, which would mean it's still 5 in uh, Mexican waters. <clears throat> and I have been uh, working with Ken Frankie on that. When it does change, obviously we're going to change around. We, we definitely abide by it. Uh, whether it's U.S. or Mexico limits. But as of right now, uh, the only date I'd kind of been given was February 28th, but that's not certain. Okay. Yeah. It's, so yeah. phenomenal. I mean, just outright ridiculous bluefin fishing. Uh, they're getting them on the 50-pound on yo-yo jigs towards the afternoon. And, hey, you know, these aren't small fish. You know, some of our Facebook people have been calling in going, well, what size are they? For one, bluefin in January, it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> but, but they are nice, great fish. A lot of them are in the... The low to mid thirty pound range. Nice, that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, Patrick told me he said that the average fish was in the twenties, in the mid mid to, to high twenties, low twenties. I mean, it was just sounded unbelievable uh, in January or in the summer or in July, anytime. Yeah, I don't care how good it was. Anytime, yeah, yeah. any time of the year. The, the kite fishing had been pretty good. Um, you know, uh, Jake uh, has quite a bit of long range background as, as does myself and. You start incorporating the kite fishing on these day-and-a-half trips, and I was talking to him on the phone, and there was two different times where he was trying to give me a rundown, and he goes, got to go to the kite pit. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Flying the kite out on the Cortez. Hey, um, Mike, are you doing some more uh, trips on the Tribute out of C4 Sport Fishing? Uh, we are. We have one leaving Monday night. We were going to put one up Sunday night, but due to the Super Bowl and out of uh, courtesy to our, our passengers and my crew, Trying to make them drive down to the landing after a, a big Super Bowl party just seemed out of the question. So Monday night out of Sea Forest, um, Cortez Bank, two hundred and sixty dollars. As of right now, I, I know a lot of people are going. Well, it's got to, you know, it's going to end soon. Well, it, it's probably going to. Um, whether the the two fish limit comes into play or not, or they stop biting, but we thought they were going to stop biting in November. Yeah. So we yeah. do have a, a Cortez Bank trip Monday night and Wednesday night. And then um, Friday night, the charter will be back out at uh, Colinette. I tried calling Jake this morning. I would imagine that, that Colinette fishing is just as stupid as anything else. That yeah. The wide-open Yellowtail fishing, the Lincoln, the rock fish, I mean, it's just, you know, pick a trip. Or Go fish? Half-day half fishing. <laughs> yeah, half-day fishing has been good, too. Well, thanks, Mike, from the tribute. Appreciate that. Keep on rolling, and uh, we'll talk to you. And get well. Get that uh, bicep well, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Get C4's landing and call. Come on out and get in on some of this hot bluefin action. Sounds great. All right. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Bart Hall is uh, not a very busy guy these days. There's some event coming up in about a month, right, Bart? 
Yeah, but you know, it's very exciting listening to the show today, guys. Really fun, lots of fun. This is absolutely amazing. And when I'm sitting there, I'm in the kitchen, making breakfast for my wife, listening to the show on my little speakers. I started thinking, we're, we're having a similar kind of show season. It's like I've been doing this my entire life. I've never seen it like this before, ever, just like the fishing. We, we are a month away from the show, and my motto has always been, there's, only, there's always room for one more. Well, I've got to tell you, by Monday or Tuesday, there isn't going to be room for one more. It's, uh, and the quality, the greed of our, of our fish is pretty good. The, the good companies are going out of their way to step up, take more space, show the product properly to the people. And I think everybody realizes this is the opportunity this year to get more people into fishing than we've had in the past. And once you get them in, they're hooked, so to speak. So yeah. I think we're going to get lapsed anglers, new anglers. I encourage everybody coming to the show to bring a friend who's maybe not been there before. That's what we want to do. And uh, so because we want to promote sport fishing for generations to come. That's it. And, hey, I want to make mention of uh, uh, we just I just received our uh, – we're going to have a little card to hand out about – Let's talk hookup at the Fred Hall shows. Uh, uh, I know you guys sent out information about uh, to vendors about doing it, and I would certainly encourage uh, those of you that are vendors that are listening to the show to do this. We uh, I just have done. Tom Waters did a phenomenal job, and then uh, Grant Christensen did the printing. Uh, it's a nice piece, and yeah. it's going to be a nice piece to just hand people that may not be familiar with the show. You're there to promote your business, so have something you can hand them. And this is a great opportunity for you, and it's reasonably priced. And Tom is a master when it comes to artistry. So if you want more, if you're a vendor, you want more information, I know uh, Fred Hall Shows has the info, and uh, you guys will send them to him, right? Absolutely. All right. Fact, Mike's in there now. I'll be there within about 10 minutes. And uh, if, you, uh, if you're thinking about signing up, I wouldn't wait till Monday. I'd call today because there isn't much left. Okay, Bart. We look forward to hearing from you uh, as the show approaches here now. What, five weeks away? No, not quite. I wish it was. Four weeks away. <laughs> yeah, four and some change. Okay. Uh, right. for, for us, we got to be there, you know, Sunday night. So it's, it's, it's a month from today, a little less. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Thanks a lot for the call this morning, Bart. Good job, Tim. That was great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you there. Captain Frank Lopresti from the Lower Royal Players. Good morning, Frank. Good morning. Good morning, Pete. I just talked to Roy, and he couldn't get through. So he wanted me to... Uh, Relay that he's uh, leaving Hurricane Bank and and headed uh, up the line to do some more fishing. But at this time, he has, I believe it is, 16 fish over 200. Oh, wow. Uh, close to limits on tuna in the 120 to 190 pound uh, class. I believe his biggest is around 256. Uh, he also has full limits of Wahoo. <laughs> So he hasn't got, uh, you know, he's got room to catch a few more tuna, and then he's going to be on his way home. He's just had an absolute fabulous trip. That's for 18 passengers, and uh, they've just had a ball. Oh, my. Sounds pretty incredible. Now, you have a big day today celebrating the 100,000th kid at 10 o'clock at Fisherman's Landing. We talked about it earlier. Great article in this week's Western Out There News with a great photo of you with uh, showing a kid how to fish. Um, <laughs> I'll have to look at it, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you're going to be there, Pete, because it is uh, what makes it even uh, uh, more befitting than anything in the world is uh, doing it with Father Joe Carroll's kids from his program. Yes. And that makes it even more special because there's a man that's done it, you know, dedicated his entire life to uh, taking care of kids and the homeless. So Yeah, and Father Joe will be there, and I know other big celebrity, uh, important people in uh, the Southern California area will be there too, as well as you, Frank. Well, <laughs> very good, Pete. We're going to be here, and we're going to look forward to taking these kids fishing this, uh, this morning. I'll see you there at 10 o'clock, Fisherman's Landing. All right, Pete, take care. All right, see thanks you for the call. Bye thanks bye. for the report too. How about that, huh, Tim? Pretty epic. Good fishing. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. It just, it just continues. You know, you look, listen to these reports. We've got from anywhere from Cortez Bank all the way down to Hurricane Bank <laughs> and everything in between. That's what's really just, you know, it's mind-boggling. And I sit there and listen. You know, we, we came up last and We had a, a really interesting trip itinerary, just the way things went in the weather. And we, we hopscotched our way all the way back on that uh, last 14-day. And down there on the beach, we, we were outside in the 2 and there's 
miles of yellowtail. Miles. Miles. Not, you know, a quarter mile long stretch, man. Miles of them. Here they're miles. What about this red crab that they're all eating? They were all all a crab down there, too. Yeah. Is that good or bad? I, I, it's just, it just is. It just I, I really is. don't put any, assign any I'd significance to that I'd say it's good because it's bringing the fish it, in. It yeah. sure isn't that bad. Well, <laughs> you know, does it have to do with the crab? I, yeah. I, I don't I mean, we see them eating red crabs all the time. And, and, and a lot of times that crab is down deep. There are those big clouds you see in the meter. And you just don't, you know, you don't even know it's there. They're spitting it up. But you, you don't see it on the surface. It, it It's certainly good in that it's it's forage for them. You yeah. know, they're obviously enjoying it. So, oh yeah. You, you real quick, you talked about, you know, hopscotching way home. I want to say that's one thing that I think is so cool going on, you know, getting fortunate enough to go on a couple of long range trips with, with Tim is how much those guys really think about what you're, you know, what the angler's going to be going through. You just think about every facet of the trip. And normally it would just be like, oh, we're going to go down, we're going to catch our fish, we're going to go home. But, you know, Tim knows every hour of the trip how long it takes to get to one place or another. And when we were on our trip conference, everybody in the galley said, okay, look, we can do this. If we leave at this amount of time, we can fish our way and scop uh, you know, hopscotch all the way home, you know, and break up the ride and fish a little bit here or there rather than just, you know, a couple hours, one extra place. And I, I just, it's so cool being on a trip with guys like you and Randy that have been there for, you know, so many years that just know if we just, if we give a little bit here, we can take a whole lot more there or vice versa. To me, fishing time, it just reigns supreme. I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. Time in the water, and, and, and productive time in the water, obviously. But any time we can break that ride up, and, and, and that's, again, it's, it's, it's what's so unique about this year is not only can we break it up, but we can break it up productively. I mean, yeah. think about that wall fishing we had on the way up. And that's that went on again on this trip. Just phenomenal. So cool. So you travel a day, you fish a day. You travel a half a day, you How fish cool. half a day. Oh, so and then cool. you travel one more day and, and, and you're home. Yeah. It, it turns that three day three day slog into it's like it didn't even happen. It, it, you seriously. snap your fingers yeah. like, well, God, I can't even believe we just traveled that far. Yeah. There it is. Pretty darn Pretty cool. epic. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cook Up coming your way. More of your phone calls, more great information with Captain Tim Ekstrom. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Cook Up on the Mighty 1090. This is Captain Paul Hebert from the Wicked Pissa. My brother Bruce and I make a living catching giant bluefin tuna. In fact, I wouldn't even go fishing with any other sunglasses than Maui Jim. Put a pair of Maui Jims on and instantly the glare is gone, the UV that can damage your eyes is gone, the ocean's true colors come shining through like never before. And with more contrast and clarity, you can see the bluefin at that critical time. Take it from me. Try a pair at your local tackle shop or check out MauiJim.com. You won't believe your eyes. <laughs> For Rancho Llanero, here's John Ireland. You know, it's interesting because the ranch has a, probably a higher percentage of most of the hotels of guests that don't fish. And it's nice on the beach. You've got the beautiful reef right in front of the hotel that you can dive on. And, and that swimming pool is uh, right there hanging over the water. And it's a very popular spot as well. And the kids tend to bunch up and, and the wives tend to get to be friends. And what's happened over the years is a lot of families met down at the ranch and got to be friends and planned their vacation so they come down at the same time. We're kind of unique for the fact that I think we're really the last of the uh, old Baja fishing style hotels. So we're proud of that and we're going to hang on to that image. We're going to be around for the next couple decades at least. At Ranch Land Air, we don't want to be bigger. We want to be better. We keep it simple, old Baja style. Ranch Land Arrow, we get a lot of guests that come back two or three times a year. RanchLandArrow.com. Hey, Seaguar fans, the wait is over for premium quality pink fluorocarbon leader material. Seaguar Pink Label is made from the same proprietary process and exclusive Seaguar resins you trust. Seaguar Pink Label is soft and supple, yet provides superior knot and tensile strength. In fact, it has 30% better knot strength than competitive floral lines. A portion of the proceeds from the sale of Pink Label will be donated to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, Inc. Get Seaguar Pink Label leader material at your favorite tackle dealer. To learn more, visit at Seaguard.com. Come to your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman for the latest in guns, the hottest fishing products, and the best shooting gear. With 17 Southern California locations, including two in San Diego County, Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prizes and selections, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Every week, you can check out fantastic specials on fishing, hunting, and shooting gear by logging on to their website at Turner's.com. Or better yet, stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com. 
When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. To a home run, Kemp again. San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Let's go ahead and jump into those jam packed phone lines. You got it, man. They are jam packed full. How about this time we talk to Greg, who's called us from Carlsbad this morning? What's up, Greg? Thanks for joining us here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Yeah, hi, guys. How are you doing this morning? Morning. What's up, Greg? Hey, I got a question for Captain Tim. You know, you're talking about those uh, tuna burgers. Uh huh. My, wife, my wife's been enjoying the Costco salmon burgers. I have some leftover, you know, frozen salmon from last year. Is it possible to take that down? Have them make burgers out of that, or what? I don't see why not, especially if it's a significant amount. I mean. They're, they're awful accommodating down there. Yeah. I, I think Call up Shauna Rosie yeah, and just ask them. I don't, pretty, I don't uh, see they'd have a problem with that. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's what I would say. Call up Rosie down there. Call up Sean and see what they what? would say. But if it's a significant amount, I, I yeah. don't see why they're And a obviously, with. they have geared up to do these. They have the machine to make the burgers. The burgers are like perfect little patties. Yeah, it's a little burger Vacuum maker. pack. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. So you get the product, you know, grind it yeah. and, 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 and put it in there a little yeah. bit. You know, press yeah, the handle and... That, what would be a significant amount? I'm just kind of curious. Well, I don't know. It's you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds, 30 oh, pounds. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all flash, uh, flash frozen from oh. Alaska. Oh, I bet. Well, yeah. So what they... about our local yellowtail or me white sea bass? Would that be sacrilegious? <laughs> <laughs> yellowtail, yellowtail burger. Yellowtail burger. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You'd have to try it. You know yeah. what I mean? We're we're in the we're at the very beginning of this thing. Right. The white burgers. sea bass would maybe like be sacrilegious. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I, yeah. I just don't think Mar- I. Did. Marlin burger. Oh, <laughs> Here we go. It's a possibilities are endless, aren't they? Right now we're going to stick with tuna burgers. Though. All right. All right. Hey, cool, thanks, Greg. Greg. But check it out. Call Rosie or Sean down at Fisherman's Processing. Fisherman's Process dot com. Yeah, I don't see why. I, you know, I'm with you on the. You know, who knows what the answer is, whether they can or not. But are are there like two more accommodating people than Sean? No. Like they just figure everything out regardless. Like they do, and you hate to say, no matter how much of a pain it is for them, like Rosie's always just like, yep, yep, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, she's gonna shake her head yes and figure it out on there and later. They're just they're the best. I, yeah. I totally agree with that. They're they're amazing at it, 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 what they're they're happy to accommodate. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm Not saying. Just That's willing, what I'm trying to say. Happy. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly I'm gonna, right. gonna tell you something. Uh, this local yellowtail we've been catching, uh, I've been uh, caught a few of those. Uh-huh. I filleted a few myself, and then I've been taking some of it to Fisherman's Processing. And the difference in the quality that comes out from when I take it to Fisherman's Processing to when I'm doing it myself, it's night and day. I mean, I know how to fillet. It's not, you know, but... But you're not Raymond. Raymond do <laughs> yeah. the filleting, you get better belly meat, you, everything about it. And then the vacuum pack, the trim, you take it out of the freezer or the cooler, and it's ready for whatever you're going to do with it. It is. You guys know I, I have I take product home from there all the time. Yeah. I love bringing, you know, a fish oh, home every trip if I can and and uh you just you cut it out of the pack, blot it off with with paper towels and and make your cuts, cut it into steaks or whatever. Yep. It's ready to go. Yeah, ready to there, go. There's They're no amazing. trimming necessary. It's remarkable. They do a great job. It really is. Hey, one other thing it Greg I wanted to say is at the very least, this is the perfect time of year for that because we're not swamped. You know, there's not boats coming in every day and, and you know, skiffs and everything else in the, in the summertime. So if you're going to do something like that, this is definitely this the time. This is the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Scott Sherman, Fifth Avenue Insurance. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, guys. Well, I tell you, I, I tuned in this morning and I thought you guys were doing like a best of show with the fish report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah, hey, I thought this was a June show. They wanted to talk about the, the bluefin deal real quick too but um, you know how spoiled are we getting when you know it wasn't that long ago we'd be excited to see a bluefin in the count and much less be worried about how many we can take uh, and and people have to realize we were staring at zero bluefin yes. uh, if it wasn't right. for the work that we did that we, we at least got two out of it so i mean it it was a compromise and that's the way it is and what you said about perception and, and of the industry i mean it's just like in politics perception many times is worse than the reality and we have to keep that in mind Yes, absolutely. And you'll be down at the Friends of Rollo event today, right? 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna show up down there. I mean, I, I I wouldn't miss it. I mean, we all love fishing, and we and and we're just absolutely passionate about it. And I bet you every single one of us can remember the time that got us hooked on fishing. You bet. And it was and it was sometime when we were a kid, and we got that first tug on the end of the line that 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 started this whole lifelong obsession with what we do. And I mean, these kids are in for a treat, and if a couple of them can be treated to something they don't normally do, and maybe develop a passion for it, that would be awesome. All right, we'll see you there, Sherm. All right, buddy. All right, thanks, thanks a lot for the Scott. call. Phone lines are packed. We're going to talk to Hills, calling us from Ventura this morning. What's up, Hills? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, Captain Tim and Pete and Rick. How you doing? Morning. Hey. What's up, Hills? Hey, um, um, I was going to ask two questions. One is, um, what is the minimum size limit on the Bonito? But the other one is, uh, on two-speed reels, there's, uh, I heard last week they're talking about people using single speed talicas and landing big tuna, and um, you know there is a substantial difference in the price I think on some of the reels. And ha- Captain Tim, how often do you do, do your anglers actually kick it down into lower gear? Can I can I use a single speed reel and land these these big tuna? You can, but but don't do it. <laughs> How often did guys use the, the lower gear? All the time. As a matter of fact, once the fish really starts settling in and pulling, you're in low gear far more than you're in high gear. And and, and does it make a difference? I, I mean, it, it's 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 night and day hills. You're 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 living in the dark ages if you, if you're using a single speed reel trying to trying to grind on a tuna that's bigger than you know whatever say a hundred pounds or something. Obviously, depends on what size reel you're using. Um, now, if you're fishing for tuna 30 pounds, okay, you can go get away absolutely. with a single speed. Absolutely, absolutely. The the, the uh, 30 to 50 pound tuna. Yeah, even even that. I'm I'm, I'm blanking on the name. The, but the the Talica. The, the Talica or the uh, the Trinidad. Trinidad. You know, and, and of course the all, all the other ones that go along. The Avits, the the little Makairas. Those, those are all they're they're all great reels. But it is such a huge advantage to have that low gear. I mean, it, it's. Uh, it's a big advantage to you, man. If you if you're gonna target anything that, that that's gonna that's gonna require that little extra ump, you know, something fifty, sixty, seventy pounds and up, yeah, go for the two speed. That 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 additional investment of what what is it, another hundred bucks or yeah. hundred twenty bucks, you're you're gonna be a happy camper when you're in a position where you're dropping into low gear and 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 all of a sudden it's like, uh, you know, yeah. you're, you're in command in that low gear, I'll, man. I'll, it, I'll give you a classic example of. How effective that low gear on a two-speed reel is for lo- for local fishing without fishing that yellowtail, uh, doing the doing the yo-yo thing with a salus uh, jig, and I hooked something. It must have been a lobster trap because we were in kind of rocky area. It must have been a lobster trap that must have been cut off from uh, the line or something. I couldn't budge it in high gear. I put it in low gear and cranked it right up. I never yeah. saw it. I got it up, like, almost to the surface. We were all curious. What the heck is this? Right. You know, is it an anchor? Is it a lobster track? And then the line broke. But I, I couldn't budget in high gear, but I, I cranked it right up in low gear. That's a perfect that's example. A, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do it all the time. You, you mean your, you know, gear gets snagged to the bottom, dropper loop, a jig, whatever. Mm-hmm. High gear, same thing. Can't even, can't even turn the handle. We just push the drag all the way forward, drop it in low gear, and grind it until the line breaks. And, and that was on Italica 16. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Appreciate that very much. Patrick G was on the boat, <laughs> the tribute on Wednesday, and he had caught a couple bluefin, didn't you, Patrick? Yeah, shoot, we really had a good time on the boat there. And a couple of things these guys did different that I noticed was the captain, Jake Henley, uh, came on the PA and said, listen, we've got a, a really uh, short group of guys here, you know, 17 people, but we brought enough bait for 35 people to fish two days. So he said, don't be shy on changing your bait. So anyway, we got into the bite there about 7.30 in the morning, had fish boiling around all day long, and uh, the guys that were getting them consistently were using smaller casting reels. So for your listeners out there, just a couple of tips here. Not just using the 15-pound uh, fluoro or the 20-pound fluoro, but using a smaller reel like a Trinidad 14A, something you can cast and get away from the boat out into the bite zone. The other thing was... I bet hook every single bait all day long, and the reason I do that is when you do a low 
swing cast off the back of the boat as far as you can get it. When that bait hits the water, he's pointed in the right direction, away from the boat, and generally he's going to swim down. And if you get a good bait, you're going to get that within five seconds. You know it. That fish, that bait takes off. Uh, the tuna chase after him, and you get bit. So if you don't get bit in the first 20 or 30 seconds, change it, bring it in. It's kind of a, a lot of work to do that, but that's how you're going to catch a lot of fish. Good and then the last, yep, the last thing I would mention is when the pick slows down, you got three to five fish going. Most of the guys are on the same side of the boat. They go back to the bait tank. Say they're fishing the port side. They're going to empty out the port side bait wells looking for fish. They rummage through them. That's the well they're going to be putting fresh bait in. So keep an eye on the guy in the tank, and wherever he's putting that fresh bait, that's where you want to pull it from. Because this particular boat, we had probably 10 well-seasoned tuna fishermen, really good fishermen that caught quite a few fish, and 75% of your chance of catching a fish was based on the bait you picked. So very, very important to pick the right bait and just uh, do the best you can. Thanks, Patrick. Patrick G., good tips. That's awesome. Catching bluefin on the Cortez Bank in January. Yeah, and I'll be back there hopefully Wednesday night next week. Oh, if, uh, well, you better. If the, if don't... the weather prevails, You're going. I will, uh, I'll go because I've, I've got them in October, got them in November, got them in December, and just now got them in January. Got to do it in February if it's available. Don't Keep forget to don't forget to make that stop uh, this time that you missed for, Pel- yes, for exactly Pelican right. Peak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks we'll so talk. much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank the you. call this morning, Craig Haber from Noah Fisheries, a big Royal Star fan. Good morning, Craig. Hey. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Tim. How's everybody? Morning. What's up, Craig? Good. Good. I'm just down here at uh, at the landing, getting ready for the Friends of Rollo event. Uh, Carrie Wilson and I and my daughter just finished a tasty Mitch's breakfast burrito. Sweet. And helping the guys load the dolphin up. So uh, it's going to be a fun day. Can't wait to get on board the boat with these young kids. And uh, hats off to Jim and Holden and the whole Friends of Rollo group. Uh, what a tremendous milestone! 100,000 kids. What a great event. It's going to be a really great event. Hey, Craig, you know probably more than anybody. Is there still some question about the bluefin limit, the two-fish limit? When's it going to go in effect? Yeah, so right now both the state and the federal um, rulemaking process is underway. Um, we're targeting, I would say, April or May, Pete. It's going to, you know, you, you have to do a public comment period. You put the rule out there. Um, you give the public a chance to comment on it, and then we craft our the final rule. Um, so I think it's uh, the the preferred alternative is with two fish per day is going to see its way through, but we we have to go through the process and this takes some time and there's there's just a whole uh, stepwise fashion. So I would say uh, we're targeting probably late April May um, a time zone to have it effective and enforceable. All right, fantastic. That's good information, Craig. And I know we we're uh, scheduled to get you back on the show prior to that. Uh, I believe in April, something like that. So we'll look forward to hearing more about what your great work's doing there at NOAA Fisheries, too. Awesome. I enjoy hearing uh, all the the, uh, the good information from Tim and all the callers. It's a, it's a mini clinic today, uh, yeah, and I'm, is. as Tim, rubbing the, the lucky Ouija balls, hoping the albacore show up. I would love to uh, have our humble fishing lumberjacks on the Royal Star get some albacore to go along with all the great fishing we've had over the years <laughs> with Tim and, and Gerby and the whole crew there. So uh, hats off. Here, here. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Bruce, we'll see you down at Fisherman's Landing. Appreciate the All call right. this morning. All right. Oh, uh-oh. Lost. <laughs> All right. Well, how about we jump right back into the phones, grab another one, talk to Gary. Call us from Lawndale. What's up, Gary? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Gary. Pete, Rick, and Captain Tim. I have a question about fisherman's processing, but, uh, Tim, every time I've been on your boat, it's been a fantastic education, and every single trip was a trip of a lifetime with lots of memories. Uh at Fisherman's Processing, I have relatives that are out of state. Can you talk a little bit about the shipping that is available? You, you know, pretty much any shipping option that, that an angler wants is available to him, whether it be, you know, air freight, whether it be some, some form of, of ground, you know, whatever, whatever, however you want it to be. Again, going back to Rosie and Sean and their ability exactly. to accommodate anything and everything, and and you know they're shipping experts now. They've been doing this for they're a really of good years. at it. Yeah. If, if you want it done, not only are they gonna not only are they gonna tell you how how to do it, but they're gonna tell you how how 
to get it done most effectively, efficiently, and cost effectively. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna comment on, Rosie. I had to uh, fish ship back east to a friend, and Rosie just said, "Well, we can we can have it show up on their door. We can have it delivered to you know a a, a freight depot. The freight is gonna cost this much less. The doorstep's gonna cost this much more. We're happy to do whatever you want. You know, do you want to save a couple bucks, or do you want the convenience, whatever?" And she just went through step by step and just made it happen the way they always do. Yeah, they have a whole shipping department and. That's a message to all of our listeners that listen to us on the web right. or listen to archives or listen to us streaming on the iPhone or your droid uh, that are out of state or out of the San Diego area or even if you're in L.A. and you don't want to wait around for your fish. They'll arrange shipping, and it's not that bad. It's not. It's, it's not. not it, it's really. It, it's, it's a lot less expensive than it, you think. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. And, and it's, it's simple. Yes. It's simple. I mean, you can you literally leave the instructions either up there at the top of the dock with them or – you can even leave your instructions with them in advance of your trip. Say, hey, I, yeah. I, you know, my catch, I'm going to be this number uh, on this boat, and I want all my catch shipped to here. I'm out. You know, One, I want to package this way, and, and they'll get it done. Yet one, another fisherman adva- fisherman's processing advantage. Right. Say, I want to throw one last thing with the shipping thing is they carry on the professionalism that fisherman's processing does with everything. When you see when somebody back east opens up that package, it's a it's a box. It was meant for shipping. It's got a special liner. It's got the gel packs. It's got you know it's it's everything you would expect. You know the quality that they deal with handling the fish and processing the fish. That same thing is involved in the shipping too. I mean, yep. it's just and, it's the best. Yeah, and the last caveat, just a, a little aside. If you're going to ship your fish, have it shipped anywhere at five mil bags. There you go. Five mil Get bags make a mil bag. big difference. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're a lot more. The standard is the three mil. Correct. And mm-hmm. the upgrade to the five mil is ten cents or something. Ten, yeah, yeah, ten, ten cents, cents. And, and well worth it. There's a, a more, uh, more substantial seal surface yep. surface, and and you know that seal holds because the shipping, no matter what, it's going to get banged around, and moved around, altitude if it goes air freight. It, it's it's a it's a big advantage. A All must. Right. Good, Good call. Tip. Gary, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we're going to find out what lucky guy's got himself a brand new pair of Maui Jim sunglasses. More Let's Talk Cook Up coming your way on the Mighty 1090. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. Fish and Mission is the best way to get involved in the growing sport of kayak fishing. And Fast Lane Kayaks in Mission Bay will host this great event every Sunday in April and May. Now you can take part in a kayak fishing trip with a professional guide and a top-of-the-line, fully outfitted 2015 Hobie Mirage Drive Kayak. And kids are welcome too. A five-hour fully guided kayak fishing trip on Mission Bay, including use of the latest model Hobie Kayak, fishing gear, and more. It's Fish and Mission with Fast Lane Kayaks in Mission Bay. Easy to sign up online at FastLaneSailing.com or call 619-222-0766. Sign up soon. They will sell out. Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter cap, in all of Sitka and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut like the ones we do almost every year, and salmon? Well, Sitka is famous for some of the best runs in Alaska. We also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. And listen to this, it's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except the tips. It's truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Come and join me on the Let's Talk hookup trip in June, or just go when you can. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136, or check kingfishercharters.com. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half. 
three-quarter and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at SeaforthLanding.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right, the big winner of the brand new pair of Maui Jim Island Time sunglasses is going to JC in Thousand Oaks. JC, congratulations. You are going to love those new Maui Jims. And an example, we couldn't get to JC's call. We just ran out of time, but he was there. Still on hold to the very end. Uh, Tim Ekstrom drew his name, and he is the winner. He's going styling with an Island Time from Maui Jim. And Tim Ekstrom, thank you very much. Sure appreciate your time. So much going on right now, and and it's time to book on the Royal Star, especially that 11-day fly down, fly back. If it's not full already after us talking about it, it should be by this week. So there, yeah, get on it. There's a few stop or a few spots on that one. We got we have some spots available on a couple of the early June trips. I know the one 10-day trip in October, the 24th through November 3rd. That wow. has space available. So. You know, it's a common misnomer that, that Royal Star is always full. It's not. There's spots here and there. And, and uh, you know, if you guys want to book a trip, give us a jingle. Area code 619-224-4764. Talk to Tracy. Talk to me in the office. You'll I, be I'm, in the office this week. Oh, yeah. And I'm always happy to try to talk somebody into a yeah. trip. You know, there I, you can, go. I can maybe <laughs> put you over the edge. But as always, guys, there's never enough time. I mean, there's a million Crazy, things that right? we have to talk about. It just the time evaporates when I'm on the show. I so I always look forward to it. I have such a great time here. I want to express my gratitude to all the guys who have ridden Royal Star with us in, the, in years past and, and extend an invitation to anybody else who wants to go with us in the future. Once We're here you go, for you. you're in. That's right. Yeah, the you're family. in the family. Hey, thank you for listening today. Thanks to Tim, and thank you for listening. Uh, I'll see you down at the Friends of Rollo event at 10 o'clock this morning at Fisherman's Landing, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m. Ricky and I will be here with Captain Sam Patella from the American Angler. Sammy will be here talking fishing. 7 to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll see you then right back here on the Mighty 1090.